Hello class! Today we will study projectile motion, so let's get started. But what is a projectile? When the player kicks the ball, we observe that the ball moves in a curved path. This is an example of a projectile. To study the motion of a projectile, consider the following steps. First, draw the XY system. The ball is given an initial velocity V0 that makes an angle alpha with the horizontal. Let the origin of the Cartesian system be the launching point of the projectile. Then draw the x-axis and the y-axis such that the positive x-axis is with the direction of V0x and the positive y-axis is with the direction of V0y. Now let's move to step 2 where we have to determine the initial conditions of the projectile. By the initial conditions, we mean the coordinates of the ball at the starting instant. So at t equals 0, x0 zero equals 0, and y0 zero equals 0, because the ball is at the origin. Then the position vector r0 is also 0. What about the value of the velocity at t equals 0? v0 can be expressed as two components, v0xi and v0yj, where v0x is the projection of v0 on the x-axis, and v0y is the projection of v0 on the y-axis. Consider this triangle to find the values of v0x and v0y. In this triangle, sine alpha is equal v0y over v0, so v0y equals v0 sine alpha. Cosine alpha is equal v0x over v0, so v0x equals v0 cosine alpha. Inserting the values of v0x and v0y in the expression of v0, we get v0 equals v0 cosine alpha i plus v0 sine alpha j. In this step, we apply Newton's second law on the projectile. Newton's second law states that the sum of forces acting on a body is equal its mass times its acceleration. The only force acting on the projectile while in motion is its own weight W equal m times g. Inserting W in Newton's second law, we get mg equals ma, so g is equal to a. Now if we want to put it as a vector form, then the acceleration vector a is equal minus g j. And the minus sign is added because the positive y-axis is directed upwards while the gravity is directed downwards. In the last step, we integrate a relative to time to find the velocity vector v, and then we integrate the velocity again to find the position vector.